People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. How do you even do these speeches? It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either go work for it, or you're going to sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. It's hard to practice perseverance. It's hard to be an introvert. It's hard to be an extrovert. Singleness can be difficult. Marriage can be difficult. Raising your children on your own can be difficult. It's hard to wake up early. It's hard to wake up late. But there's a reward on the other side of waking up early. If you wake up late, you've lost too much daylight. What somebody else did before you woke up, now you only have a fraction of the day to get it done. There's a reward on the other side of one pain and there is regret on the other side of the other pain. And if you're going to win the reward, you're going to have to persevere. You're going to need endurance. You're going to need to be consistent. And on the other end of the pendulum, there is the pain of regret where you did nothing because you were afraid you would make a mistake. The pain of regret will hurt you. So choose your heart. Make a decision. I want the pain of finishing something. I want the pain of persevering. Give me the pain of forgiving my haters. Give me the pain of forgiving people that tried to kill me. Give me the pain of letting it go. Give me the pain of growth. Give me the pain of acquiring new skill sets and talents. Give me the pain of managing my time well. Give me the pain of waking up early. Give me the pain of praying when I didn't feel like it. Forgiving when I didn't feel like it. Letting go. Give me the pain. I'll take that pain because of the on the other side of that pain, there is a reward. Every single day of my life, I'll take reward over regrets. Will you keep sleeping on your potential? Or will you wake up and make it happen? Choose your pain today. The anguish, the irritation, the frustration that you feel today will be your strength to leap walls tomorrow, to leap hurdles tomorrow, to champion the day tomorrow. So you gotta turn your pain into progress. You gotta learn how to turn your pain into power. I can because I'm capable. I will because I'm strong. I must because they're dependent on me. Don't you sit here and act like you've reached all your level of success. No, you have not. You have not begun to see the things that's about to happen to you. Never ever, never ever, never, 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 never ever give up on your dream. Listen to me, that mental picture, never let it die out. Never ever let it die out. I don't care how much time passed. I don't care what happens, circumstances, situations. I don't care what de defeats, what upsets. I don't care what happens in your life. Listen to me and listen to me very carefully. You better never, ever, ever, never, ever give up on your dream. Never let the mental picture, the picture that you painted, listen to me. Whatever you saw, whatever you said you were going to accomplish, whatever you said you were going to do, never ever, I know, I know repetition deepens the impression. Never ever, never ever, ever, never let your dream die. I can. Because I can. I will. Because I'm strong. I can get through any obstacle on my way to my journey. I must, because they count on me. Don't give up, don't give up on your dreams. Don't go, go pick it back up. There's a dream you left two, three years ago. Somebody told you you couldn't do it and you internalized that foolishness. Stop listening to the haters, shut them down, shut them up. You wanna shut your haters up, how do you do it? You do it by being successful. You don't do it by falling into their traps, doing what they want you to do, put your head down, you don't do it by not being successful. Let me tell you what I learned. Nothing succeeds like success. And so pick your dream back up. Pick your goals back up. Kill a, kill, kill a noise. Shut them down. 
and surround yourself with people who will help you, who will help you, who will speak life into you and not death. People who will speak life into you and help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. It's your boy E.T. Remember, remember, I don't care nothing about your past. I got one too. Listen to me, you have the opportunity right now to make the rest of your life the best of your life. You have gone too far. You've invested too much time. You've given too much to quit now. You put too much time into it, too much effort. You've cried too many tears, right? You've gone, you've gone without eating. You have, you have invested too much to walk away at this point, all right? So we all in, baby. Now it's time to get the reward. It's about momentum. You gotta keep it 100. You gotta be true to you. And I'm tired of people emailing me, telling me what somebody told them they can't and can't do. Listen to me. The only thing you need to write your book, the only thing you need to do to finish the GED, I'm telling the book now, I'm telling the book. The only thing you need to do to get your four-year degree, the only thing you need to do to get your master's, the only thing you need to do is get your PhD, that is to believe in your dreams and stop listening to others. You're about to get certain things just because of the effort you put in, the time you put in. You're about to get a reward. Are you hearing me? You're about to get a reward, baby. So don't quit, don't give up. There's some blessings that come in life after regulation. They come in overtime. They come in extra innings. So for some of y'all, you're gonna have to learn to wrestle with it. You're gonna have to learn to fight with it. That's what wrestling means. That's what I'm talking about. You're gonna have to put in a little bit more sweat, a little bit more blood, a little bit more tears, but you gotta wrestle with it. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Meaning that I'm, we, gonna, we, can, we gonna do this thing all night long. We gonna do it all night long, but I'm, I'm telling you that I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me. But you gotta, you gotta fight with that thing and tell that thing, you will quit before I quit. You'll give up before I give up. You fight your way through this one, but you do not quit. You do not give up on your merit. Do not quit school. Do not quit on your goal, your dream. You keep going, and not just don't quit. We're not talking about not quitting. We're talking about taking the prize home. It's time to stay focused. Why are you so antisocial? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you staying on the basketball court so much? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you out there practicing in the hot sun when ain't nobody else out there? Because I'm trying to get it. Pain is temporary. I've been trying to get that into your spirit. I've been trying to get you to celebrate pain. That pain is your friend. That pain is gonna take you to the next level. Remember, just because something's never been done before, it doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means we haven't figured out a pathway on how to get it done, and we will get it done. This is it right here. This is that moment that you got to work. This is that moment when you got to push. There is no weakness in the place of business. Think about your end goal. Think about what it's going to look like. Picture it in your mind. See yourself already there. Stop praying that the storm will pass over you and pray to grow through the storm. What you go through, you will grow through. You simply have to give it everything you have to get it. You need to shut down all negativity frankly not give a sh what others say and think. You're going to do what you've been called to do. You're going to be what you called to be. You're going to have and you're going to prove that everybody that tried to break you, you're going to prove a wrong. Everybody that tried to stop you, everybody that tried to kill your dream, you're going to prove all of them wrong. I don't care what the adversity has been, you have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. If you truly want to make change, if you truly want that greatness, you got to work hard. You got to dig a little bit deeper. You got to find it. You want to test my resolve. You want to test my ability to go to limit. You want to see where his world ends and mine begins. This ain't no fucking game. This is my motherfucking lifestyle, son. Shut up!
You talk entirely too much about your dream. You talk too much about your goal. Say it once, say it twice, no more than three times, and get to work. You already know what it feels like to quit, to throw in the towel, to sit on the couch. Do you know what it's like to give everything that you have and push and persevere? You got to make the opportunity happen. You got to be fired up. You got to be hungry for it. You got to have the desire to push yourself. Are you hearing me? Work, 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 work. Grind, 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 grind. You should be a monster. Because everyone says, well, you should be harmless. You don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat. No. You should be a monster. And then you should learn how to control it. The definition of being aggressive is forceful and sometimes overly assertive pursuit of one's aims. In combat, almost nothing will happen the way you want it to if you don't force it that way. The enemy, nature, time, there's all kinds of things that, that are going against you. It's a losing battle. And if you don't use force of will, then, then you're not going to get it done. What it means is, is you need to make things happen. This is the good thing about being aggressive. Sure, there's, there's certain parts of your nature that are aggressive, but it can also be trained. You can start to think with an aggressive mindset, which is I am going to take action. I'm going to overcome obstacles. I'm going to push through roadblocks. I'm not going to take no for an answer. And th those are things that you can train. There's so often times where people, they get told no or they hit an obstacle and it's game over for them. They're just done. They're done training. They're over it. And your attitude, you have to go, okay. Little, little roadblock, cool. How am I gonna get through it? How am I gonna get around it? What I need you to do is evaluate yourself today. Evaluate yourself to see where you are in this race of life. Many of you don't even realize that you've been racing to the finish line. This life is a race. Some of you need to be pushed to start running because you've been walking or you haven't been moving for so long. And you don't even know that you're in a race that all of us are competing to win. But it doesn't matter where you finish. It matters that you run after your goals and your dreams. The way to live is to run after your dreams to run after your goals and to run after that finish line. There may be things in your life right now that's holding you back from running, but you have to break through those things. They're there to hinder you, but you can't let it force you to stop running. Chase your dreams, chase your goals. I don't know the situation you're in right now, but the situation that you're in is not your future. It's not who you really are. It's not your full potential. The sky's the limit, but it all starts from within. It's all up to you. You should be a monster. You have to be hungry for greatness. Sometimes, like most people, I want to throw in a towel and just give up. Sometimes it just feels like there's just no use. There's just too much ground to cover. I need to cover it so that I can get where I need to be. I need to constantly remind myself over and over again, I am not yet where I want to be, but I know I'll get there. I am not where I want to be, but I am so grateful I am not where I used to be. I am talking to those people that are just about to give up, that are just about to lose all hope. I am here, ladies and gentlemen, to cheer you on, to let you know that you 
You, my friends, are going to get there. You are going to get that promotion. You are going to complete that marathon and you are going to run for your life. Whatever you are working towards, you are going to get there. But you got to get crystal clear what it is you want. What it is that you are seeking for, what it is you truly want, you must know. You've got to know that you're going to get there. But most importantly, most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, work like hell. Crack the ground and keep moving. Make the ground shake, crack the world, get it going. Don't let nothing stop you. I am pleading with you. When the rest of the world shuts you down, you got to be the one to stand up, shout out, cry out, stay tall, work hard, dig deep, and go after it. There's nothing gonna stop me. If you didn't make me, you can't break me. If you didn't make the sun come up, you can't stop me. If you didn't make the moon shine at night, you can't stop me. My purpose, my will, my dedication, my motivation is all about doing the business because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm about. I'm about that business. I'm about that life. What are you about? I need to constantly remind myself I'm not yet where I want to be. But I know I'll get there. I'm not where I want to be. But I am grateful. I am so grateful that I'm not where I used to be. It's time to get real, it's time to get raw, it's time to look ourselves in the mirror and come to the resolve that this version of ourself is not going to carry us in the stretch. I've been this version of myself long enough that if I don't change, if I don't do something about this, then I'm gonna find myself bankrupt. For me to understand, for me to be better, for me to be stronger, I must learn to suffer a little bit. I must learn to struggle a little bit. I cannot reap the rewards of success without understanding about struggles. Success is not automatic. You don't get things just because you want them. You achieve your goals only when you are disciplined enough to keep showing up when you don't feel like it. You're gonna put the blood, you're gonna put the sweat, you're gonna put the tears in, you're gonna lose sleep, you're gonna go days without eating, you're gonna do whatever it takes to make the sacrifices necessary to manifest. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said, you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. The truth of the matter is, how are you so emotionally injured, so mentally drained, so physically fatigued that you have allowed your dream, your destiny to take a back seat to this excuse that you don't have what it takes, that you're not smart enough, that you're not tall enough, that you're not wide enough, that you're not deep enough, that you're not connected enough, that you don't know enough people. You keep comparing yourself to that person and this person. When will the excuses stop? Your purpose bigger than your excuse. I don't know your name, but I know you have a dream. I don't, I don't know where you're from or where you're listening to me. You may be listening to me in your closet, your bedroom, the gym, the car, the bus, the train, the plane. I don't know where you're going, but I know you are going somewhere. You've got a destination. People that make excuses are not connected to their destination. They don't have an end game. They don't have a goal. You have allowed yourself to become a weak link covered under the blanket of excuses. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that has a dream 
And if you've made your excuses bigger than your dream, the time is now to apply pressure. It may not be easy, but it's not impossible. This is not a I feel like it today. This is not a I'm motivated for a week. This is an every single day mentality. You may have to work three times. You may have to lose sleep. You may have to go to college and raise five children and still maintain your marriage and work your side hustle. I don't know what your story is, but if you will keep a no excuse mentality, then the sky is not your limit. The sky is your starting point. This is an every single day mentality. I never get turned off every single day. I want my destiny. I want my dream. When somebody is in love with who they've been called to become, what they've been called to fulfill, what they've been destined to do, there is no day off. There are no light. Listen, I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I can never get turned off. Every single day, I'm giving everything I have. That's how big my dream is. And so there's no excuse. There's no pain. There's no dilemma. There are no speed bumps. There's no distraction that can turn me off. I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I want this thing every single day. For people that feel like they're wasting their time, they're not getting the results they want, what is one thing that they could be doing right now that would turn things around for them? I think one of the things is the way that we approach time. This is something that almost no one talks about anymore. So I feel like you may be behind. You may actually be behind your destiny right now. Like maybe you're not on pace. In fact, I think most people watching this, listening will say, I am behind on achieving my destiny. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I feel like it's slipping. I feel like I'm behind. So you better figure out time differently. And you can bend and manipulate time to your advantage. And so I, about 25 years ago, went, I'm not the most talented. I'm not the smartest, and I'm really not. I don't come from, you know, a whole track record of success, right? I don't have the perfect upbringing. How in the world am I gonna win? I gotta do things other people aren't willing to do, and I gotta fix the way I look at time. The most stupid, antiquated, ridiculous concept on planet Earth today very well may be that a day is 24 hours. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's the dumbest thing ever. 24 hour days were contrived when there were no cars. There was no electricity. If I wanted to get you a message, I had to write something down if I could, send it on a horseback, hope you get it. That's insane. Never mind the internet. So it used to take hours, days, weeks, months, years to do can be done now in a millisecond in the internet or on our smartphones. Yet we measure the time the same way that guy did? That's bananas, that is so stupid. And so my days now are from 6 a.m. to noon. That's a day, it's six hours. And in that day, some days you just chill. But in that day, I'm gonna get the amount of productivity, faith, working out, fitness, money, business, you name it, in that day. We've all had a morning where we go, I got more done this morning than I have in weeks. Well, why can't you do that every morning? So I measure time, I've compressed and condensed time, I've bent it. My day is 6 a.m. to noon, and I'm not crazy. You're crazy for thinking it takes 24 hours, just like some dude in a cave did 300 years ago. And it's unfair that people have taught you this. My second day starts at noon and goes till 6 p.m. That's day two, but what the cool thing is at the end of day one, this clock goes off about noon every day, bro, and goes, what did I just get done? What didn't I do? What do I need to be accountable for? What do I need to double my efforts? Just like you do at the end of most days, right? And then the next day is 6 p.m. to midnight. And some of those are just fun days. Some days I chill, right? But some days they're really super productive. What I've done now is I have changed and manipulated time. I now get 21 days a week. Stack that up over a month, I'm gonna kick your butt. Stack it up over a year, you're toast. Stack it up over five years, my entire life is different than it would have been otherwise. And if you do this for about 90 of your traditional days that you think are, you will come back to me and go, that profoundly impacted my life. And here's the other thing that happens. The world responds to you differently when you value your time like that. What is precious is valuable. That's why a diamond or this watch is way more expensive than the piece of paper that's written down there because it's more scarce. When your time, when you interact with the world is slightly more scarce, they respond to you as if you're more valuable. So you get more accountability, more productivity, more fun, more joy, and the world flips its response to you. All of a sudden you become more valuable and precious to people 
when your time is different. And you'll get thousands more days in your life and live a much more blissful and happy life than the person who only gets 24 hours. I'm not coach right now, I'm your conscience. You're, you're in a fight between will and skill. I say will first because that's where you are. You locked and loaded with skill. You practicing every day, you putting in your work, you buying everything, you making the investment, you living your dream, you walking like your dream, you surrounding yourself around your dream, you got mentors, everything. You putting your work in, you got your skill. Now it's a test of your will. It's a mindset thing you in right now. It's a mindset thing because your challenge your challenge ain't moving, your mountain is not moving. You don't feel like you're making any progress. You're not physically moving when you see everything else around you and other people around you moving. You're not making progress. You're in the test of your will right now because life says it has a little more test for you. You can look at your challenge with skill and it will see it just as that a challenge or you can look at your challenge with will and see it as much understand this and listen to me clearly you may forget this face you may forget this voice you may forget who told you but get your pads out don't ever forget these words that i'm about to tell you if you want to be great in this life you only have one choice gentlemen you only have one choice you can make choices that just get you remembered or you can make choices that ultimately make you a legend. If you put as much time into working on winning as you put into thinking about losing, you'd already be a champion. When we gonna get tired of just knowing and seeing successful people and become one of them? Time is out to, to sit up here and just make these average decisions. To be make these irrelevant decisions that don't change you, don't change your family, don't change society, don't change your environment, don't change the world. It's time to make decisions that make you a legend. We see it every day. But the only difference, baby, you gonna make a choice to just be remembered, or you gonna make a choice to become a legend. You got to stop quitting. We got to stop giving up. All this TGIF, TGIF. It is now TGIA. Thank God I'm alive. When we open our eyes and we're in our right mind, we live as though we really appreciate that opportunity. And every time I see a post, every time I see a tweet or, or just anything, I want to ask the person, why are you thanking God it's Friday? Hello, newsflash. Tomorrow is Saturday. The day after that is Sunday. The day after that is Monday. What are you thanking God is Friday for? Because you're preparing to quit. You're preparing to stop what you're doing. You're prepared to clock out. You're prepared to go home. And you're in the mental mindset to do nothing. I dare you to get prepared for the, the challenges of your life by, by getting rid of comfort. I dare you. I tell you that when you find that job, that, that if you don't have a ride to work that you want, and then when you get there, you take the stairs. I dare you not to check the brain, baby. I dare you to work through your lunch. I dare you that when it's hot, that you work faster. When it's cold, you work longer. I dare you to learn something new today that you didn't know from yesterday. I dare you to. I dare you to run past that challenge. I dare you to face that person. I dare you to look at it and say, look, I'm more than this right now. I can handle it. I dare you to look at your obstacles like right a mountain. I dare you to stop running from it. I dare you to, to stop throwing away food because you scared you're going to eat it at night. I dare you to stop taking the detour because it's a crack out on the corner and it's a liquor store on the street. I dare you to stop running from your addiction. I dare you to stop running from the old you and become the man you know you can become. Mountains aren't going to move. You got to climb that bad boy, baby. You cannot get what you want in your life by being comfortable. Comfort is failing us. Many of you are denied your dream and your goal because you have a consistency versus an intensity problem. Consistency is when you do something. Intensity is how you do something. 
And that's why many of you, no matter what you do, no matter how much you do it, no matter who you looking at, no matter what you read, you going to be denied because you think that just being consistent at something is going to let you win. That just that earns you the right to win. That I'm being denied that corner office. I, I'm being denied that car. I'm being denied this quality of life. I'm being denied that opportunity, this scholarship. I keep getting cut uh, off the team. You know, I, if I just stay, if I just keep practicing and I just stay around this team, sooner or later I'll make it. No, you won't. No, you won't. Because consistency does not guarantee you the win. Many of you, as, as bad as you don't want to accept this, you're never going to win because you're not intense enough. And until you get intense to the point that nothing, nothing will get in your way, that you will not get in your way, you'll never win. The reason why you give people so much value is because if you give them so much value, they'll never leave you and they'll always be there for you. And you will never need for anything as long as you give value to people. And so I learned that as I got older, that part really didn't make sense to me at the time. But the money working for you part, and I was like, what the hell? How do you make your money work for you? Mm -hmm. Again, all I know is how to go get money. That's all I know. So later on in that, he says, wealthy people do three things. So this made, we in a cell for about 45 days. Every conversation with him about money and transition was always wealthy people do. So he says, wealthy people, first they get into stocks, then they start a business, and then they get real estate. So if when people ask me, how did I get into stocks? It's because I follow that rule. And so I just, my, my rest of my time in prison, I wanted to be that. I wanted to be a part of that wealthy conversation. And so what happened to me was it started reminding me of being in the streets. Everything about it. And I heard this term one time that said, the real gangsters are on Wall Street. The real gangsters are in the government. And I was like, damn. The reason why people think wealthy people or people with money are sinister is because that's what you kind of taught in the hood. Like you kind of taught like the people who really have money, like they did some wicked to get it. They did some backstabbing, cut get it and you'll never get that right and so that same mentality now happens on a lower level right the hustling and the dope dealing so now you think like yo i gotta just do sinister shit to get money and then the people who are successful in the drug game they're looking at the people at the top like damn i want to be that but the people at the bottom will never get a taste of that and so now we just kind of living off ambition and so now the people who are in the middle who work in they're like all them people with money they all crooks they all because being at the bottom teaches you to envy people at the top it, it just happens it's a it's something that brews down there right it's kind of like when you cook i don't know if you had gumbo before right but it's kind of when you cook food right the base goes to the bottom and so most people live in that bottom never knowing how they'll get up there mm. right i remember so when i was working in the inner cities mm -hmm. i remember having this moment where i was like wait a second this is not an intelligence problem Intelligence is evenly distributed. Like mm -hmm. in, I, I remember saying to my wife, the next Elon Musk is gonna be found somewhere in Compton. The problem is he doesn't believe in himself. Yeah. And so he's not gonna do anything. And so I became obsessed with this idea that generational poverty is not about money, it's about mindset. Now it will manifest as money, mm -hmm. but it is that, so I remember I had one kid come to me and, and I was the first person that told him, you can be successful, like what the why do you not think you can be successful? It didn't even make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, my mom always told me that the world didn't want to see people that look like me succeed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I'm like, even if your mom had good intentions, that is the worst advice ever. Because if you think you can't be successful, that will govern the way that you move, mm -hmm. right? So Kobe Bryant, people that have listened to me for a while have heard this quote a thousand mm -hmm. times, but booze don't block dunks. Mm -hmm. the, world, the world can hate you all they want. But if you're good enough, think about this, the best basketball players in the world were paid millions of dollars to stop Kobe Bryant from scoring and the <laughs> scored 81 points in a single game. 81 points. When you've got five people paid millions of dollars mm -hmm. actively trying to stop you and they can't because you've gotten that good. Mm -hmm. That to me is the game of money. Mm -hmm. People can not want you to succeed all they want, but if you out invest them, mm -hmm. they can't stop you. So if people are not encouraging you to read, mm -hmm. you're not going to read. What happens is now, no one now believes that it's possible. Once you keep passing that down, you start accepting the lower level. 
And then there's a few of us or a few people who say, no, nah, I'm an outlier, yo, like, I'm about to go for it. And then whatever happens, I'm with it. You feel me? So for me, again, one of the greatest things that happened to me was my mother telling me, like, the world is raw and you got to get how you live. But I also saw my grandmother be a legal entrepreneur. So I saw it from both worlds. So while I'm in prison, I, I pick up a habit of reading. That was the game changer for me. On the streets, I never had the opportunity to just sit down and read because I'm always trying to survive. In prison, there was no longer a survivor mode there. I started hustling in prison. So I was working in the laundry. And so uh, your clothes don't really get clean. So I found a hustle like, yo, I wash your clothes when we do it, but it's $5 or $25 a month. So that gave me a whole another set of money. And then I started being like a numbers dude. How Vegas have the numbers, the betting. I became a numbers guy. So I used to get up in the mornings and watch CNBC. So mind you people in prison, they love to watch the young and arrested. <laughs> and so I would have to get up before them to watch like Squawk Box, mm. Jim Cramer. And I'd be like, damn, they love get all this money and they not risking their life. Something got to change for me. Like something got to change. And so I just started listening to them every day and I started comparing it to the streets. So a good business is just like a good hustler. A good business has great product. They have great clientele. A great hustler has a great product. He has consistent clientele. A good business on the stock market has what's called a moat, a competitive edge that keeps his competitors away. A good hustler on the street is going to have that competitive edge where they be like, nah, yo, I ain't rocking with you. I'm going to just wait to trap, come back. Right? So there's the competitive edge. A good business has a good brand emote. Me, my name is good. Right? So a good hustler on the street, yo, trap got that blue magic. I'm good on you. Like, if I can't get trap, I'm going to just go try. But trap got that blue magic. That's what I'm rocking with. Brand emote. Right? That's it. A great business on the stock market has more assets, more liquidity than debt. A good hustler on the street is if you don't learn how to fund your business, if you're operating while all you have is re-up money, you're not going to last long. So those components reminded me the same in the, in the stock market or uh, in the world. If a company's paying tariffs, that's equivalent to a, biz, a, a dude on the street going pay draft to go hustle in somebody's hood. Like you can't hustle over here unless you pay me draft. <laughs> it's the same as a tariff. It's the same thing. Yeah. So once I under, once I broke the game down to a way that I can understand it, it wasn't about me just being brilliant. It was mm -hmm. like, yo, how do I make the game winnable for me? Like once you start understanding the fundamentals, you give yourself power because you now understand, like you said, you see how the machine works. Right. And so most people look at the machine and marvel and say either I'm like most people look at the stock market. Most 98 percent of the people who I know look at the stock market and say, yo, that's not a game I can play. I'm staying away from it. And so the way the way it's set up is the world is set up. Well, listen cool i don't even want you to play just give me your money i'll play it for you right. so when we look at like banks like we understand that banks don't necessarily work in our favor right so banks only give us 0.05 percent interest on the money we have there but well, we can get eight percent just by putting our money in the index fund so why would i just sit my money in a bank and let the bank make all the money because all they're gonna do is invest the money for you so they're now operating as the plug they operate now as the man who, I'm going to front you this, I'm going to make my money, I'm going to take the cut, I'm going to give you just enough to keep coming back. I'm going to go to the plug. Who is the plug? The stock market. The relationship with money in my community is you make money, just enough to pay bills. And so once you get tired of paying bills, you say, you know what, I need to treat myself to something. Right? No matter if I got to go in debt, no matter if I got, I need to treat myself to something to take this misery away. So you treat yourself to something that you can't afford at the time, right? But it makes you feel good in the moment. And so because it makes you feel good, you say, you know what? <sighs> I'm living. This is a reprieve from everyday struggle. So that's the mindset comes in and say, everybody around me had the same problem. No one represented the solution. So if I don't change something, I'm only going to end up like everybody else I know. Somebody has the solution somewhere. There's too many people out here living the life of their dreams that I'm watching. They know something I don't know. And the only thing that they had was access to a different type of information. In 2010, 
this is after I'm home from prison now, right? I'm home from prison. Um, I'm back in the streets hustling. Because even though I have the information, I don't have the money, right? And I'm like, well, I gotta get the money. <laughs> My door gets kicked in in 2010. They get uh, eight pounds of weed, by ten thousand dollars. Yeah, by the cops. Eight thousand, eight pounds of weed, ten thousand dollars, a two twenty three, a forty with extended clip and a beam, and a hundred X pills. So oh. the cop tells me, "You ain't learned your lesson. You ain't learned your lesson." And I was like, "Damn, that was some, right? Like I got knowledge, I got information, but I still fell victim to the same shit that everybody around me knew." So therefore, the knowledge that I had wasn't powerful because it wasn't applied. So I was fortunate. God bless me. Um, I wound up getting found not guilty because it's called fruit of a poisonous tree. So they kicked in my door, but they didn't have probable cause because they stopped me in my truck. They didn't find nothing on me. So they went to my house, kicked the door in with no search warrant. So now everything you find is null and void. So now I get into the robbing game. So now I start robbing dope dealers. And I got in a situation where um, I was good at it. Me and my partner, God bless his soul. And then one day I almost got killed. And I go to my partner and I say, bro, I'm out. I guess a done deal. But when they kicked my door in, something happened. So they took my truck, they took my money, but they didn't mess up my stock account. I said, oh, okay. Start working as an iron worker, building stadiums, building power plants. It's crazy because I was making good money, $2,000 a week. That's good money to something. Like, yo, $2,000 a week, yo, that's it. $2,000, $2,500, like, it was amazing. I started saving and investing 70% of my money. I was living bare minimum. I was like, if I'm going to change, I got to make, like, the hard choices. It's hard for people to make sacrifice because you got to now go, go against and do without some of the things that gives you that momentary gratification, that simple, that... Ah, that's what keeps you alive. That's what keeps you going. Just to go on vacation one time a year. To get these pair of shoes that may cost me a thousand dollars. I know I can't afford them, but I've worked so hard. I need that right. just to keep giving yeah. me something. You have a phrase, Wall Street looks like us now. Wall Street looks like us now. There's another phrase you say, but you should like put that same like stamp on mm -hmm. it is I own that I own that because you talk about stocks in a way that sounds so rad <laughs> where it's like you refer to yourself as an owner of the company yes. and and the thing is it actually is true like mm -hmm. you're not playing a linguistic game it is true mm -hmm. but people don't think about it like that but mm -hmm. it's so much more powerful than having a cool pair of kicks is to say I own the mm -hmm. company that makes those kicks, mm -hmm. or I own the company that makes that phone, or you know Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, works for me. I'm a Smart shareholder, guy. right? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Explain that basic idea of ownership for people that might not quite put it together that stocks really are owning that company. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually got that term from Warren Buffett um, in one of his meetings. I want to say it was the 1995 shareholder meeting, and he said that um, he owned great. Owning a stock is like it's owning a percentage of a great business. And so when, once I understood that concept, I understood that the key to wealth is through ownership. The people who aren't wealthy is because they don't own nothing. You only have your money sitting in cash. If your money is just sitting in cash, realistically, you're becoming poorer every day. Right. Or they own depreciating assets. And that's what cash is. It's a depreciating asset because the more money they print, the more money that money loses value. Right. So if it's just sitting, it's the reason why the bank wants you to have your money there. So they can take it and use it and invest <laughs> it so much and be like, hey, it's just sitting, I'm gonna give you 50 cents on whatever you had in there. Right. And so the idea of ownership was, yo, we can just start owning everything that we, no matter if it's just a stock, like that's powerful. Because if you can start owning the businesses that you now, consume every day, you turn a one-time transaction to a lifetime of profit. And that was major for me. Because if I go to the store and buy a pair of Nikes, that's a one-time transaction. In order for me to get something from them again, I gotta come back and buy another pair of Nikes. But if I own the Nike stock, long as I own it, it's a profitable um, vehicle for me. So that one-time transaction be can become a lifetime of profit if I own that business. 
if I'm gonna buy Apple, if I know I'm an Apple user, if I know I got the phone, I got the AirPods, I got the MacBook, I got the PC, I got I'm excited when Apple's about to drop something, why wouldn't I own it? As much of it as I can, right? Like if I if I understand that concept, if I know people gonna America has one of the biggest trash problems in the world. Right? So if I know that waste management is a company that's going to be here forever because we aren't going to stop throwing things away, why don't I own that company? Because I know everybody throws things away. And so now instead of me getting excited about Apple Lime being around the corner because it's a new phone, I'm like, yo, y'all about to make me some money. <laughs> right? So when I hear a company like Waste Management has bought 40 acres of disposable land for another landfill, I'm excited about that. And another great thing about the stock market is for me, it now makes me pay attention to the world. And so now I understand what's going on in the world. I started learning business cycles, market cycles. You know what I'm saying? Like, because now I can understand, yo, this is okay. Things are going out of business. It's okay, we're, we're in this cycle. Okay, people are hiring. Okay, we're in expansion cycle. And so now I started taking, I took an economic class on my own without just understanding the world. And so you start understanding when Something is happening in China. Okay, something happening in China. So I own Apple. Apple is, has 20% of their revenue in China. Okay, they might take a little hit right now. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the stock market helped me start understanding how the world moves, the fundamentals. Knowledge is what gives us leverage in life. It's not about how strong you are. It's about what you can learn. And then how can you actively apply that? I have this acronym called FEAR, um, finally exiting average reality, right? And what happens is until we can overcome the fear, some people actually fear success. Mm. Success comes with a lot, right? But until you can overcome that average reality that you live in, no matter what you're on, once you become comfortable there, it becomes average. Anyone can live in average. Everyone can live in mediocrity, right? Then there's those outliers who consistently push themselves to go to the next level. And the thing about the human mind and the human body, it will go as far as you push it, as long as you believe in it. Like you said, the only belief that matters is what do you believe you can do? I personally believe that there is nothing I cannot do. And for me, it's all about impact, purpose, fulfillment. Like the money is a byproduct of everything else. That isn't my focus. My focus is I have a knowledge and information that I know that can change lives. Not just one life, not just like lives. And so the way that you change lives is by consistently learning, finding new ways to put that information out there, being able to open up, being able to be vulnerable because people need to connect. People connect to knowledge in the way that they can see two things that help people, imagery and vocabulary. So for me, it's always about how do I attain as much, it's always a challenge for me. How can I attain as much knowledge as I can because I love learning, but then, how do I take that and be able to now reciprocate it or give it to somebody who may not understand calculus or trigonometry, but if I can give it to them in this way, they can say, oh yeah, I got it. And there's more people that struggled in the world that has become successful. So struggle has to become a language that I'm, I struggle. So that's the language I'm great at. So if I can break down things into a struggle language, now I make it the game winnable for everybody. In this very moment, all you have is all you need. What would you like to do? What do you believe you've been destined to do? Sometimes you have to fall back into the dark room and focus on you. You have a date with destiny. You have unfinished business. It's time for you to go back to the drawing board with a new perspective. If you can see it, you can have it. I am Clutch. I am the difference maker. I am the game changer. I must work out X amount of times a week. I must forgive. I must evolve. I must become. I must retain. I must grow. I must live. I must evolve. I must go to the next level. I must live in this type of house. I must drive this type of car. Perspective is what changes the game. Stop complaining about the divorce. Stop complaining about the job loss. Are you gonna complain in the face of conflict? Or are you gonna seize 
the opportunity. What if losing your job was the opportunity? What if the divorce is an opportunity? What if the bankruptcy is an opportunity? What if the one you love was an opportunity for you to reconnect with somebody and forgive them? Something inside of you that's a snap. You gotta get tired of being broke. I'm talking to that person who grew up without a father. I'm talking to that person that is acquainted with pain. I'm talking to that person that knows what it's like to come from nothing. And so you literally have nothing to lose. And the only thing that's in your hand is a dream. The only thing that's in your hand is I have what it takes to get to the top of that hill. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. Goliath! There will be many giants in your life. There will be depression. There will be anxiety. There will be oppression. There will be stress. There will be overwhelm. Will you buckle under the pressure or will you rise to the occasion? You are not dead yet. You may be tired, but you are not dead. You may be broken, but you are not dead. You may be weary, but you are not dead. You have an opportunity to rise above what happened to you. You gotta make it up in your mind that all you have is all you need. Consider this your wake-up call. What most people fail to realize is that pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. There is no path in life without pain. Whatever it is that you're going after, whoever it is that you've been destined to become, you cannot have it. You will not become it without pain. You will face challenges and difficulties and giants regardless if you are single, if you are married, if you are a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home father, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working a nine-to-five, if you're an educator, if you are an athlete, if you are a musician, a singer, a producer, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing, pain is inevitable. If I'm gonna hurt like this, if I'm gonna bleed like this, if I'm gonna cry like this, let me cry because I'm in the best shape of my life. Let me cry because I'm conditioned to weather the uphill war. Let me cry because I'm building my relationship. I'm building my business. I'm building my legacy. Let me cry because it hurt, but there is a reward on the other end of my pain. Let me cry tears because I passed the test, because I gave it everything I had. Choose your heart. Everything in life comes with hardship. Make a decision. At some juncture, you will encounter pain. And the moment that you get acquainted with pain, you get acquainted with hardship. You realize that no matter what you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you plan, you will not be able to avoid a measure of pain. I don't care what it is, losing weight, I don't care what it is, a, a new eating paradigm, a new relationship paradigm, new thoughts, new behaviors, it doesn't matter what you're after, what you're looking to become, if you don't go to the gym, it's gonna hurt you, if you go to the gym, it's gonna hurt you, your muscles are gonna tear, but on the other side of that pain, there is a reward, there isn't any regret, you won't regret taking care of your body, on the other side of making those healthy decisions, there is a reward! It's the reward of discipline. It's the reward of longevity. It's the reward of influence. It's the reward of power. Do you want results? Do you want a reward? Or do you want regrets? The decision is yours. It's all hard, so choose your heart. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Pick your pain. Every 
everybody's got a plan until life knocks them out because we weren't ready for the pain and when the pain came we did not process it processing pain is a skill set you've got to acquire it's a type of currency if you want the future if you want next level if you want tomorrow if you want to manifest if you want this thing I don't care what it is then you're going to have to get acquainted with pain the pain of discipline the pain of growth the pain of learning the pain of giving the pain of forgiving it all hurts so pick your pain choose your heart because at some juncture in life at some corner you're going to turn you are going to encounter pain and you've got to process that pain well hear me when I say it pain is unavoidable it's hard to let go of the past it's hard to give sometimes of your time your talent and your treasure it's hard to balance work life it's hard to acquire new skills it's hard to be stagnant it's hard to be a workhorse it's hard to be lazy it's hard to learn how to manage and cultivate relationships it's hard to learn from your experiences it's hard to turn your mess into your message it's all hard it's hard to hold on it's hard to let go but there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships and you've got to choose reward or regret there is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make hope hold on pain ends pain does have an expiration date and when that pain ends another one will surface but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. And so today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart.